Good day, my name is Dela Imbal. I'm your expert doctor. In today's video, I'll be talking about this question. I mean, the question I'll be answering in this particular video is actually because of the comment of one of the uh, visitors on Global Trade Tutor. He uh, visited the Global Trade Tutor channel on YouTube and he asked the question, so what should be my consideration? What should I look at? What should be the factor that should guide my decision in sourcing for suppliers? Now, and I'll be doing this for both importer and exporter. So I will look at it from importer's perspective. So first, in this video, I'll be looking at the factor to consider when you are choosing a supplier, a local supplier for item of export. I'll probably break the video into two or three, four parts, depending on the length, so that it won't be too long, maybe 10 minutes max. Number one is product quality and consistency. The supplier in question you need to ensure that this supplier can consistently deliver this product and consistently deliver the quality that meet the required specification and international standard. Remember, you are shipping this product abroad. So let's say you want to do, let's say, cocoa or cashew, or you are doing cosmetics, or you are doing shea butter, or you are doing whatever it is. It doesn't matter whatever it is. I mean, the product. What is important in that trade is that Quality is key. And every product has quality specification. Every product has quality specification. In the local market, it might not be a big deal. You know, I remember when sometimes ago, I have a client that wanted to export yam, and he went to my 12 market in Lagos, and he went with a proof. Because the, mark, the yam to be exported have dimension, and the yam to be exported have a dimension in terms of length and diameter is such that that year must not have hair, no hair, no bruises or, or injury, no sand, not too big, you know, for a family to eat at home, no finger. Now, these are specification of yam, banana specification, orange have specification. If you're doing charcoal, you have specification, you're doing wood. Have... Because what makes, what differentiates a qualitative product or product of good quality from product of bad quality is actually specification. And sometimes when you say quality of the product is bad, does not mean it cannot be used. For example, look at yam. Yam of many fingers. You can use it locally. In fact, it's good for wedding, wedding uh, <laughs> as dowry payment in wedding. But it's not good for export. Meaning the fact that a product is not allowed for export, not good for export, does not mean it cannot be used at all. Only that the buyer abroad does not need this product in this form. So ensure that the supplier can supply this product, this quality consistently, the high quality consistently, and that you have the requisite specific, I mean, um, requisite um, um, certification. So some product might require uh, certification program. So if I'm going to buy from you, uh, this now assuming you are a, uh, a manufacturer that wants to buy raw material to process for export, or you are a merchant who simply buy for export. If you're a merchant that simply buy for export, you want to check the quality of the product. Do they have the necessary certification? If it's food item, does they have not that? In some cases, the market might require ISO certification. The market might require HACCP, hazard analysis, or critical control point, HACCP certification. Any of those certifications, if it's required, if any certification is required by the buyer, then you have to check is that is the, does the business already have that? And typically, if they have that, it will be on their document. It will be on their packaging material already. The packaging material already we have uh, the um, the quality. Sorry, the the logo. For example, let me see. I think I have a particular. Let me check. Uh, yeah. Okay. Look at this product now. This is Master T. Uh, one of the best tea you will find in Nigeria is a herbal tea. Now, look at this product now. If you look at this product very well, you will see the logo. You will see the logo of um, NAFDAC. You will see ISO. Because this, this particular company has ISO certification, it has ASO also. So you will see NAFDAC, you will see ISO, you will see certification. Can you see? Can you see how close it? Can you see? So you see? So if I'm buying this product now, if, if I'm mean, saying to a buyer abroad now, and the buyer says he needs a herbal tea 
there are hard, hard soap, hazard and analysis and critical control point certification, and uh, ISO, International Standard Organization. You can see both of them are on this. Now, so this product now have certification. So the idea is this. So that means I will have gotten a sample of this product, the person's product, and confirmed. This is for finished product. For, for, for commodity, I would get sample and take it to lab for analysis to check the quality in the lab to be sure that the quality of this product is good enough. That the quality of this product is good enough. That way, I will be able to ensure that at the end of the day, I don't end up buying this product and find out the quality of the product is bad. Remember, I'm discussing what factor, the factor to look at, the thing that should guide your decision in choosing a local supplier as an exporter, in choosing a local supplier, or what I would call what no one tells you about sourcing for local supplier. <laughs> what no one tells you about sourcing for local supplier. My name is Dela Emibo, and I'm your export doctor, and I'm signing out.